morning, everyone. It's Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. Today we are going to talk about dandelions and some mushrooms, too. I'm going to flip this around and we're going to wait a little bit, see if we can get some people to pop on here. <laughs> Yikes. Sorry. Now, let's see if I can do this. Oh, I think I can do this. Okay, there we go. Good morning, welcome to my kitchen. Um, I'm hoping this tripod works, I think it's going to. The mountain man and I have both been simultaneously recording and one of our tripods blew a gasket, the leg won't stay up, so he was recording last and I can't find a tripod so my lighting is really bad but it is what it is we'll just make do uh, yeah well anyway we'll see okay so I love this time of year I love foraging from the wild I love being able to live off the land it is just such an awesome feeling and I don't know, I grabbed my little kettle this morning and went out and was uh, gathering some dandelions and I don't know, it just makes me really feel like a pioneer. I love this, I love this kind of stuff. I love being able to make things for my family and provide for my family, put things on the shelf and also just knowing all there is to know about foraging. And let me share with you, that is one very vast subject. For those of you that like to forage, I'm sure you know that it is, there's a lot to know and there's a lot of precautions to take, um, but it's something that is a really awesome asset to us all because they're in our backyard. Many of you probably feel these are weeds and I guess technically they are, but they've got a lot of value to them. Um, to be able to make wine and jelly from the flowers, you can also make tea. You can eat the greens. The greens make a great salad and are um, usable just like spinach. So it's a fantastic gardening green right in your backyard. The thing is, when you're foraging, you want to be sure that, um, good morning Heidi, you want to be sure that you are foraging from a safe area that hasn't been sprayed, that hasn't, it's not alongside of the road. You know, you don't realize that when things are right alongside of the road, they're ga gathering a lot of toxins from the exhaust from the cars and just all the garbage. So uh, we are extremely careful with that. Good morning, Janet. So being able to be, um, out and about where we are, our stuff is safe. And um, I just want to encourage you to make sure that you're foraging from a safe location also. But you've got your greens, you've also got your root. Now I wasn't able to get that uh, a long root out because I couldn't find my spade. My gardening things are kind of stashed in the back of the basement so I didn't get them out this morning. Um, but it's just, it's so easy to forage this stuff from the wild and to be able to utilize it. We make an amazing hot bacon dressing. It is a sweet and sour type of uh, uh, dressing and you can't go wrong with bacon, in my opinion anyway. I've actually found people this year that don't like bacon. I just almost fell over. That's just, that's not, Amer that's just not right. But anyway, um... Being able to make the hot bacon dressing over top of these greens is like tradition. It's an Easter thing that typically uh, we would enjoy, but because we live in a, a different climate than we used to, uh, they're just coming in now. So it certainly wasn't something we could enjoy for Easter, but we will certainly be enjoying it now. The flowers make great jelly, and it's so, so easy to do. Um, Keep in mind, too, that the roots are usable as a means of making coffee. It's not what you're accustomed to now, but it adds... I've drank it already, and I really enjoy it. Um, I do all kinds of natural beverages, and for a while I couldn't have coffee until I found a good organic blend that worked for me. Uh, but staying away from coffee is important, so I have an herbal coffee that I utilize that is amazing, which reminds me... 
I will add a link to my girlfriend's book on making herbal coffees because they're really healthy and good for you. There's a lot of medicinal purposes to dandelion. It's a great diuretic. It's um, loaded with A, C, E, uh, D or B complex, I believe it is. I'm actually zoning there. It's B complex and iron and calcium and potassium. And so the pioneers used it often for anything that ailed you because of all the benefits that you were reaping from it and it was readily available. Plus you can dry the roots and the flowers and everything and utilize it in tea over winter. So it's a really useful plant and um, it's really easy to make your uh, jellies. All you need to forage something like this is a small spade and a scissors and you just you handle it like you would spinach or your greens from your garden. But when you're making the jelly I use either my uh, large ball jar, and I like wide mouth because they're easy to get in and out of, and I have a pickle jar. You know, you get these big pickle jars from the store. We've saved all these because these are such a great size. So when you're, when you're making your jelly, you want to make sure that when you clip it, you clip it where you're getting away from all the greens. So hopefully you can see this. There we go and you clip the, the stem off and then what you want to do is make sure that you get as much of the greens off of here so get your extra green pieces off if there's some in there it's not going to hurt anything and the reason you want to get as much of it off as possible is because it will make your jelly bitter or your wine or your tea whatever you're making it's going to make it bitter so the more you can get off of there the better and all you do is stick that in your jar and you're going to want three cups of petals in here to make a batch of jelly. So when you're picking the and foraging the dandelion, you want to get about 10 cups so you have enough to put in here for your jelly. And it's just really, really simple. All you do is you pour, pour good morning Chad, you pour boiling water over all of your petals once you have them in the jar. And then you let it set. I like to let mine set overnight. Um, you can just let it set for a couple hours, but I like to get a good full flavor jelly, so I let it set overnight. And, and then you use the water from, or your tea basically, from your jar, you strain it. You can use coffee filters or um, jelly bags, um, anything, um, I use my cheesecloth, that's what I'm trying to spit out. So um, put that over top of your container when you're pouring your, your tea in so that you're not getting any of the petals in, in your uh, jelly. certainly won't hurt if they're in there. But to strain it and to get a, a nice uh, clean jelly uh, without anything in it. Some people like, like uh, the marmalades have the orange rinds and the peels in it. So if you like it that way, you certainly can include them in there. It won't hurt anything. Um, and then you, you make your jelly like you normally would. Now the recipe that is in the description today, there's a long description because I've included a lot of links. My dear friend uh, Sharon Peterson from uh, Simply Canning is where I got the original recipe for the jelly. And then there's also a recipe for dandelion wine which came um, from Lori Neverman which is another dear friend of mine from Common Sense Home. And you'll find those links there, so you can add those to your archives, print them out, um, and put them in a book. That's what I highly encourage you guys to do when you're finding recipes and things online, is to create yourselves a, a book, a notebook, get a three-ring notebook, and put the, the recipes either in sheet protectors or uh, hole punch them and put them in your binder so that you have them. Because in the event that something were ever to happen to the internet and our internet connections, that way you are able to still have your great recipes. But I encourage you, if you haven't tried dandelion, uh, to enjoy it. It is, it is such a good green and such a wonderful... Um, Asset, and most of us, like I said, refer to it as a weed. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole process of making the jelly, at least not on here, because it is, because like I said, I'm going to need to leave this sit overnight. And it was raining this morning. The mountain boy and I got out for a walk before the rains came in, and uh, I'm going to forage my. Oh, geez. 
Sorry, I just saw a hawk fly in and my chickens were down there, but they're smart. They know to hide, but I just want to make sure they're not in harm's way. Okay, so anyway. Um, brain, brain fart. Um, but I am going to do a YouTube video on this, okay? And um, I will share the process with you. So that you can enjoy it as well but I wanted to provide the link Sharon did a great job of explaining it's very easy to do um, I didn't put this link in the description today but I love Ooh, my lighting is so bad Pomona's there we go I think you can see it Pomona's pectin it's uh, a natural form of pectin and it allows you to work with low sugars I don't like to put all the sugars that are called for into my jellies, it's just too much. Even using the organic, I like to cut back on the sugar. So that enables me to do that. Um, you can also use natural pectins, uh, such as apples. Um, they make a great pectin as well. Um, but I wanna show you some of the books that I have. In the description below, you will find a link that links you up to resources. And the first thing that comes up is my How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle resources. And I wanted to point this out to you. We have a lot of books. Now my lighting is really sucky, so you can use the uh, uh, links below. But the Edible and Medicinal Plants of the West is one of, we've got a bunch of favorites. Um, I also have the Edible and Medicinal Plants of the Rockies, which you can, there we go, that's a little better, better lighting. But having great resources is really, really important. And um, here is the Forager's Harvest Edible Wild Plants. And it's really important that you do your due diligence and that you really research things because majority of our plants have an evil twin, dandelion included. Um, so it's important that you are able to identify based on the characteristics of the plant. Let me find a small one here. Um, you know, the leaves are something on the dandelion that are very uh, dominant and, and really stand out. Uh, so that is something, but you need to um, do your research and make sure that you are understanding that you are getting the proper plants. So there's also the complete guide to edible wild plants, mushrooms, fruits, and nuts. Uh, this lighting is so bad. Sorry, guys. I was hoping to have the camera directed the other direction. So forgive me on that. And then the complete guide to edible wild plants. Ah, there we go. Sort of. You can see that. And then I also have wild wines and meads. There are a lot of medicinal values and uses for these as well, and that is why I utilize them. Elderberry is one of my favorites. Elderberry is like my go-to for all ailments, as the pioneers did with the dandelion. And then I also have mushrooms, a mushroom book, which is of the Pacific Northwest. And then I also have mushrooms, an introduction to familiar North American species. It is a flyer. They are all linked up in that resource. Um, one of my favorites, if you can see this, there we go, is the morel mushroom. If you have never tried a morel mushroom, oh my gosh, you have to try the morel mushroom. They are, we call them the steak of the wild. We often make them with like venison or elk, but eating them by them, themselves, they are such a robust mushroom and it tastes like you're eating a piece of steak. I kid you not. They are just amazing. Now, I have been kind of staying away from the mushrooms um, with my illness and being involved in biotoxins. I have to stay clear of funguses and molds. As a matter of fact, I woke up this morning not feeling well. Um, our our climate right now is really moist, so I don't know if it's in my home, in my surroundings. We've been walking every day, but I've been waking up with a swollen face, and my neck is not wanting to hold my head up all the time. So thankfully, my walk did release my muscles, but um, scary stuff. So I want you guys to go out and enjoy some morel mushrooms for me, okay? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid to touch them right now. Um, let me just see here. I wanted to cover a couple other things. The mushrooms, um, this is a big one. Mushrooms is where you really need to know your stuff. We don't mess around with it at all because there's too many lookalikes. And what I highly recommend with mushrooms is to find somebody local. You can even go to your county exchange office. 
Um, they can often point you in the direction of people that can assist you. Also, um, your local community colleges and colleges may have um, access to such people that are familiar with the mushrooms and know their stuff and can take you out into the woods and show you the differences between the look-alike and the real deal. Um, morels, they're hard to mistake. And um, same with the coral and brains that I mentioned in the description. Those to us are safe. They're very identifiable. Um, so that's what we focus on. But there's some other great, there's some uh, powder puff uh, mushrooms and some other types of mushrooms here in our area. But we are not familiar, so we are not taking any chances. Because the mush mushrooms can, and, and plants, can, can kill you if you eat the wrong thing. So you definitely don't want to just wander out in the woods with a, a book in hand on mushrooms and, and just, that's my opinion and that's what I'm sharing with you. Uh, I always want you guys to do your due diligence. When you're doing, identifying plants, you know, it's very important also that you know the difference between the lookalikes and oftentimes it's pretty, um, pretty visible that the differences between them but it's really important that you know the differences and you don't get them confused so it's important to have a book with you a notebook keep notes on the things uh, and as a matter of fact there is an amazing course going on right now that you guys can take part in um, it's from the Herbal Academy which I absolutely love I've taken some of their courses I, I love their materials and you can go there by going to treyerwilderness.com slash botany wild crafting course. And that's in the description. But I, I highly recommend that you check them out. If you are interested in natural medicines and foraging from the wild and being able to utilize things in your surroundings, they are a great, great resource. And they have a lot of really awesome tools. Um, some inexpensive, some more costly. Their bigger courses are quite costly, but very worth it because of what you're gaining. Um, I would love to be fully um, educated in natural medicines. And again, like I said in the beginning, this whole arena is like endless learning. There is so much to learn and always something more to learn in regard to medicinal plants and, and, and edibles in your surroundings. So keep that in mind. Um, let me just see here. I wanted to share those with you. Oh yes, and I wanted to remind you, if you didn't see my um, video last week, the Treyer Wilderness Academy is live and running. We are taking members. We are doing a free bread baking course, which you can find by going to TreyerWildernessAcademy.com. And up on the menu bar at the top, you will see free classes and can link up to the free bread baking course and register. You will also see um, what we have to offer and uh, find our membership in there, which is a skill of the month membership. And what that means is every month we will be sharing a new skill with you, whether it's foraging from the wild or learning how to butcher chickens, uh, learning how to cook from scratch, brain tanning a hide. The Mountain Man has been working on a hunting video that will eventually come out. Um, we are putting that all together, not just hunting big game, but turkeys and grouse and, and ducks, varying game uh, um, as well as the big game. Um, when, you're, when you're butchering chickens and fowl, it's um, very similar in nature. Same with deer and moving up into your bigger game like your elk and your moose. So he's going to teach the whole gamut, teaching you how to, to learn how to hunt if you've never hunted, using different um, uh, resources as well, bow, a rifle, shotgun. So it will be a really intense course. So there's a lot of things being offered. It's not, uh, it's everything that we do here. So it's very broad and we would love to have you join us. We will be offering other free courses as well, but we've started out with our bread baking course because I know that that's something that many people struggle with in their kitchen trying to uh, cook from scratch. And it's one of the biggest discouragers also in the kitchen because if you don't have good yeast, your breads will fail. And oftentimes that's just the biggest struggle people have is that the yeast they're using is no good. So all that's taught in there as well as additional options, gluten-free baking and also uh, paleo and ketogenic uh, breads, which there is such a thing. It's using coconut flour and almond flour. 
So that's my cup of tea because that's what I have to eat. No grains for this girl anymore, which adds me some, but I have alternatives, which makes me very happy. So the other thing I shared a couple weeks ago is a Bible verse, Romans 1, 12. And I just thought this was so perfect for what I do every Wednesday on here. When we get together, I want to encourage your faith, but also want to be encouraged by yours. So guys, this is a two-way thing. I know I'm like rambling on, but I love your feedback and I love being able to communicate with you guys and get to know you. So those of you that are watching and, and those of you that are going to join me on the replay, what are some things that you forage and, and what part of the country are you foraging from? Because we have people following us from Australia, the UK, uh, Germany, all over the place. It's really amazing and it really excites me that we are reaching people all over the world. So share with me, where, what are some things you forage? Uh, you know, a common thing is huckleberries, raspberries. You know, to some of us, they grow in our backyard wild but you know it's just a common thing but to others you know people have never considered foraging them and out here we have elderberries growing all over the place and they go untouched by most I don't ever see anybody out foraging them those are such a great great resource to dry as well as to make jellies jams syrups and then for the medicinal purposes oh my goodness that's endless and that is such a great thing to have on hand uh, for your winter months when the cold set in to be able to make a tincture or to make tea that's something we lived on all winter because there were so many germs flying around this year so but what are some of the things you guys forage and be sure to check out all the resources that I share with you also seeds for generations um, is a great friend of mine, Jason, he and his family um, have created Beyond Off Grid. They have a family-run business of the Seeds for Generations where their entire family gets involved in their heirloom seeds. So for those of you that are getting out into your garden and need seeds, definitely check them out. Um, there's a link below for them as well as the uh, Gardening Notebook which is another great resource for your gardening. I'm getting out in my garden later today to do some work, and then I'll be out there Saturday planning things. And I am just so excited to finally be back in my garden. So we'll probably do some videoing out there as well. But I think I've covered everything that I specifically wanted to cover today. And then I will do my jelly, and I will show you that next week. And um, I will also have a video on that on YouTube that you can check out. But the Mountain Man has been doing a bunch of videos, some that will show up on YouTube and others that will be part of our academy. But uh, definitely stay tuned with our website. Uh, today a great post went out with uh, our contributing writer, Michelle Hedgecock. Uh, she is doing saving and winning with money, and today's post was on uh, keeping a clean home. Her last post was on food, and I highly encourage you to check both of those out. Uh, you can find her materials uh, by clicking on the About Us on the TreyerWilderness.com website, and you will find our team, and you can find all of her posts by clicking on her there, or you can uh, search for her as well in the search bar. But she has some great uh, posts and she does amazing things with money. She, I'm, I'm so thoroughly impressed all the time with the ways that she's saving money. So definitely check that post out. And uh, our other uh, contributing writer, David, does a lot on uh, faith and inspiration, encouragement in a positive and encouraging way. So I want you to check those posts out too. And if you're not familiar, you can find the Mountain Woman Radio archives there as well. And you can find my radio show on iTunes. Got a lot going on. We are excited and, and thrilled to have you guys joining us. And would love for you to join me every Wednesday here. You can click up above on this video, I believe, and uh, ask for it to notify you when I'm live. That way you know when I'm on. It's usually, the game plan is 10.30 every Wednesday, but occasionally I'm a little later just depending on our internet and, and activities going on here that might require my attention. So guys, I appreciate you greatly joining me. I wish you a wonderful day and week. And I'm just going to say a quick prayer for everybody. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for our audience, for all of those following us from all over the world. 
we all have our varying struggles and ups and downs. So those that are in need, just lift them, heal them and love on them. And Lord, just give us all a safe week, a healthy week. May we focus on you and continue to focus on our preparedness. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you do, but even more so what you're going to do. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Guys, thanks so much. I'm so grateful to have you guys join me. Your time is as valuable as mine, and I'm always grateful to see you join me on here. So have a fantastic day, and get out and do some foraging. There's so much going on and so much starting to pop up, so don't miss out on those opportunities. You guys take care. Have a great day. God bless.